Although it might weigh up to uh, 12,000 pounds with a 6,000 pound load on the belly, it can lift its own weight full of gas, it weighs 6,000 pounds. Uh, you fly it with no hydraulics and it's not heavy. So other aircrafts you can fly with no hydraulics, but it's very, very heavy. All you're moving on this one are those servo flaps on the back side of the blades. So when I move the, when I move the controls around, you can see those little yeah. servo flaps moving. Yeah. And those are imparting different amounts of lift on different blades. So if I want to go up, I put those all down a little bit, make more lift on collectively the whole system. Or if I want to go left or right, I would want to put more lift on the left or right disc to make it tip or turn. And that's how you turn the aircraft too. If you're at a hover, you know, equalized lift, and you want to make, say, a left-hand pedal turn, you want to make more lift on the back side of the right disc and more on the left front disc, so it kind of pivots like that per se, and that's how it turns about its axis on there. Uh, when I'm flying this, I'm flying the Seahawk up the hill, exactly the same. I want to do something, I just do it, and it flies exactly the same as any other helicopter. Uh, there's mixing units and stuff that makes the, the controls do what it needs to do, so it's totally the same as any other aircraft on there. Aircraft's all, pretty much all aluminum, very lightweight for its size. It, you know, a lot of people are surprised by how big it is. A pretty good sized aircraft. It carries about 200 or so gallons of fuel, gives us a little over two hours endurance. Yeah, it was started off as a commercial aircraft though, back in command to do logging and things like that, ski lift building and that. So they started it out to build a tough, reliable, day in and day out aircraft that needs very little maintenance. Uh, less than an hour maintenance, man, uh, hour per flight hour, so it's uh, incredibly low. Costs are on the order of about $1,000 an hour or so to fly it, including maintenance and fuel, maintenance reserves, all that kind of stuff. So that's you know, exponentially cheaper than any other aircraft. But you can see the cargo hook is directly under the under the load, I'm sorry, under the rotor, so it's always gonna be in the center of gravity. It's right on the center of the aircraft. Uh, if it needs if it needs uh, to be on there, it's on there. If it's not, and it doesn't need in the lift mission, it's not. This is not a modified aircraft. Externally, though, it looks pretty, pretty much exactly as one of the, the unmanned aircraft. This does have the unmanned, per se, tail. You can see where there's a couple of antennas we've been mounted underneath the tail for radar altimeters. There's a couple of communications antennas on there to let the system talk back and forth to itself. Uh, in the cockpit, there's one switch difference. There's one little switch panel on there that allows you to turn on and unman the system. And then there's some cube computers and EGIs and all the system components sit back kind of underneath the exhaust pipe on there. The engine is very high and hot capable uh, on there. It's an 1800 horsepower engine that in this installation only uses 1350 horsepower. So this aircraft will lift 4,500 pounds up to about 20,000 feet. Uh, over in Afghanistan, you know, the high and hot is a big issue. That's why you're seeing a couple guys going in in a Chinook a lot of times, because that's the only other aircraft that can lift that kind of weight getting up there. And this, we went out to Leadville, Colorado and did a bunch of testing up in, the one aircraft, we had an oxygen system installed because we were flying that high with heavy loads. And, uh, so it's it's very, very capable uh, to keep on going up there. Because the engine is so overpowered, it's kind of loafing along normally. So it's got a huge high and hot reserve built into it that it can lift up, uh, you know. 20,000. It's, 20, it's been up to 20,000 feet. Yeah. The aircraft would come up into the air and this, the load would pull it over to that way. And the sensors basically will move the aircraft over until it's sitting directly underneath it and then it'll just lift itself back up. That's also what we do with the, uh, with the hand controller, just to move it along that way too. The hook though is rated for 12,000 pounds, although we use it 6,000 pounds on this aircraft, so it's very, very robust. This trolley unit uh, allows any kind of oscillations typically to just kind of dampen themselves out. It also gives us more control authority. So yeah. if the load, if we're in a turn, and you can imagine if we're in a turn and the load was centered on the center of the aircraft, it's gonna to wanna to pull the aircraft out of the turn. If it goes down and rolls onto the inside of the turn, it gives us a greater control margin and also allows better stability for the load. A symmetric load or can you handle an asymmetric load? We can handle basically any kind of load. The bigger, the weirder the load, the slower you go. Yeah. So if it's a load, like a dense box of stuff, you know, you can fly that faster. If it's uh, big, like an antenna or something like that, in any aircraft, 
band or unband. The more aerodynamic the load is, the slower you have to go so it doesn't start oscillating. Yeah. The with this aircraft, when it first came out, it's, it's so simple to fly. Uh, auto rotations, things like that, are so easy to do in here. It's uh, when you get into a regular type aircraft, the tail rotor and everything, it, it's this is too easy, so you don't learn well enough how to fly. So the, yeah. there's no torque control. I mean, you just lift up on it. You're not trying to balance a tail rotor and yeah. all that type of stuff. So it made it a lot uh, a difficult transition. And uh, if you learn to fly in this into another aircraft, it's it's a strength of it. But when the helicopters were first coming out, the Navy bought a bunch of those type this type of rotor system. And then they'd buy a few other type of tail rotor helicopters and the guys were having a hard time flying it because this is so easy.